Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to PTZ Optics Back to Basics. If you've been around here lately, you may have seen there's a lot going on in the world of Nutex NDI HX, which has now recently been an addition to our cameras um, as an upgrade form. Now, many of you have already done the upgrade um, and have had lots of questions, some successes, some troubleshooting. So today we have a very special guest um, our lead engineer, Matt Davis, to walk us through a little bit of an overview of that process. And of course, we're giving away a 20X Z cam with the NDI upgrade. I know you guys are gonna be really excited for that. But since um, we are about to, hey Matt, they brought you on hey. camera. <laughs> Thank you for coming in here today. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, so before we get into all that, we wanted to do some fun stuff. Okay. We've been talking a lot about NDIHX and uh, register trademark of new tech. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to test your guys' knowledge a little bit. So we're going to do some trivia and uh, see how much you guys really know about NDI and me too, which I'm a little bit nervous for. So It'll all be good. <laughs> Everyone's saying hi to you in the chat. Tom Sinclair's here. Hi, we, friendly folks. Yes, we got Rudy. Everybody's very excited to have the king himself, <laughs> the king of cameras. Maybe once I get things figured out. <laughs> All right, Paul, you ready for us for that trivia? All right, so if you want to uh, head to, what's the link again, Paul? You put it in the chat. All right, great, perfect. So go ahead to the link in the chat on YouTube and Facebook to access the trivia game, which will be beginning shortly. Uh, and you're gonna play along with us. If you guys were here for our last show, uh, we just started this new trivia thing. A crowd per, I think we're doing it through. So it's a really <laughs> fun platform to be able to do some live trivia with you guys. So we're just going to wait for everybody to hop on and give everybody a moment here. We've already tested Matt, and uh, he got 100%. Yeah, uh, you know, I had a good chance. <laughs> he seemed a little <laughs> stumped on a few of them, as you can imagine, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I helped him out. Yeah, so. it, it required a little further clarification on a few of the questions. <laughs> Matt Richards, what's up, man? Derek, Jonathan, Oliver, Troy, Ronaldo. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. They all showed up for Matt. Yeah. I'm sure I'm a little nervous for you. Yeah, well, <laughs> they I'm just happy that, you know, I'm here. They get to be here. Hopefully we actually solve something or inform somebody today. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming they're going to have some questions for you. So <laughs> I know you've already mentally prepared yourself for that. Uh, as much as I could. <laughs> <laughs> I know. As much as one can, but that's why we're here today to kind of overview the whole process with yeah. everyone. And yeah. Okay. Are you ready, Polly? Let's do it. Let's do it. Please. Question number one. What does new tech generally suggest a pure NDI source will use for bandwidth? Give you a couple seconds here. Oh, you got the countdown timer. Was that there last time, Paul? Yeah, so it's either 10 megabits per second, 50 megabits, 100 megabits, or a gigabit. Ah, so you want me to read the answers, too? Let's see what we got. Okay, two people said 10 megabits. One said 50. One said uh oh we might be starting too early. Make sure you're clicking the link in the chat if you want to participate in this, guys. Ding, ding, ding. If you answered C, 100 megabits per second, then you are correct. One person, who was that? Greg Postma. Nice job, Greg. Nice job, Greg. I can't remember if we used the low latency YouTube feature or not. I, I think we did, but they might be a little bit behind us. So anyway. Some people are participating in the chat as well, I see. That works too. Here we go. Question number two, how much bandwidth does an NDI HX video stream typically use at 1080p 60 frames, frames per second? A, 8 to 12 megabits, B, 20 to 25 megabits, C, 80 to 100 megabits, or D, 1 to 2 gigabytes? Do, 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 do. do you have some fun music on, Paul? Yes. You do. <laughs> I should have known. 
Oh, we got some good answers here. Okay. Four people said A, three people said B, two people said C, and nobody said D. The, the link is in the YouTube and Facebook chat right now if you want to join in on the fun. All right, so Leb is in first place. What letter was the correct answer, Paul? I missed that. Let's go back. Uh, a. A. Eight to 12 megabytes. Thank you, sir. All right, next question. Here we go. What does the HX in NDI HX stand for? Is it A, highly efficient, B, heightened execution, C, highly exact, or D, high efficiency? Hmm. This one could be tricky with the first and last one. Oh, looks like the majority of the people are getting this one right. 10 people said D, high efficiency. Man, which these is, people have done their homework. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Matt, you've taught them well. <laughs> well. You guys have taught them well. <laughs> it's a mixture. I, t I tend to get to hide away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You said your phone was uh, ringing off the hook. Oh, the it day has we been. Were finally yeah. released. Yeah, <laughs> my phone has been yeah exploding. It's kind of good because you taught us, and then we teach other. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt gives us the information, uh, and then we share it out. Sometimes uh, unpermissible. <laughs> Unpermissibly. If that's a word. It's gotten a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> He's being nice. All right, next question. Leb is in first place. Question four. When will the PTZ Optics NDI HX upgrade 50% off sale end? That, that's, that's a good one because it is coming up. Well, that would eliminate one of the yeah. answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. All right, let's see. Two people said A, next Friday, March 23rd. Nobody said never, so I didn't give too much away there. Maybe. <laughs> 14 people said this Friday, March 16th. And three people said at the NAB show. Good guess if you had no idea the NAB show, but it is this Friday, the 16th. Yep, it's coming up soon. Yay, and you heard it straight from Matt there, too. So <laughs> where we've lost credibility, Matt can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can help us out there everybody in the chat um s m for majority said c as well so that's good one person in the chat said b <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right you can always hope <laughs> never that would be nice <laughs> not for not so much for us no but <laughs> in my job <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> all right paul q5 NDI stands for what? A, new broadcast interface, B, next broadcast index, or C, network device interface. New text, NDI stands for what? Doo, doo, doo. Give you guys a couple moments here. You know, I'll admit on the NDI, for a while I'm working on it, I didn't even bother to look into what it stood for. I just started working on it. Um, it was a while in before I actually bothered to learn what the acronym was. Don't you feel like there's so many acronyms in the tech world? Yeah, and, and the problem is when they bleed over into each other and use the same acronyms and the two worlds collide, it, gets, it can get very confusing. I remember when I was first learning, I had like a key of, you know, uh, like uh, RTMP, RTSP, <laughs> HDI, SDI, and I was like, I'm never going to get the hang of this. I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still learning. <laughs> All right, so the everybody, except for one, said One joker C, out there. One joker. <laughs> Network device interface. So great job, guys. That is correcto. Yay. So who was in the, f in the lead? Sufan. Sufan. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting used to this trivia thing myself <laughs> <laughs> and uh, trying to be hosting... <laughs> it without Paul too. All right, let's see. Question six. Are we on? Five, six, six. Whew. Good thing I didn't say one more. 
We know I'm superstitious. When you are sending an RTMP stream to multiple destinations, that is called, this is a hard one, A, multicasting, B, simulcasting, C, double casting, or D, multi-streaming. This one always kerfluffles me up. That's like your word, Michael. <laughs> All right, majority of people looks like it's coming in saying multicasting A. Four people are saying B, soul my cast, simulcasting, excuse me. <laughs> Nobody said double casting, and five people said multi streaming. Ooh, that one was a stumper. The correct answer is B, simulcasting, says Paul. <laughs> 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 what do you mean it changed last week paul <laughs> good job on that one jimmy i see you in the chat answering a sufan you still are in the lead but christopher kiwa kiwa and texas williams are tied who's going to take second place or are you going to come up and get first place all right, seven. When you are sending data addressed to a group of commuters, compu computers simultaneously, it is generally called A, simulcasting, B, multicasting, C, doublecasting, or D, tricaster. Computers, commuters. Eh, <laughs> Shoot. They all receive data. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, this one is confusing, I will say. This is like almost a sick question because you use the word simulcasting in it, but the correct answer is B, multicasting. A lot of people are getting that one in the chat. John, good job in the chat. Tony got that on, in the chat. Joan got that. And jo another John. Great job, guys. B is correct. Sufan's still in the lead. Christopher and Texas Williams approaching swiftly, however. Darshan got it as well. There's a little bit of a lag in the chat, so I'm seeing their answers come in now. All right, question eight. True or false? A multicast network is required for NDI. Ooh, this question. is going to be perfect um, leeway into today's discussion. Looks like the majority of people coming in are voting for B. False. It's starting we to shall even see. Out. It's starting to even out. <laughs> it's a tough one. And the correct answer is indeed B, false. We actually uh, aim to deactivate the multicast function um, yeah. when installing the NDI upgrade, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it all depends on your application, but if you're not sure if your network's ready for multicast, mm, it's probably not. Sticky situation there. Does that conclude our questions for today's trivia, Paul? Yes. All right. So was that Sufan who took the lead? Yes. Yep. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> you know your stuff. So, so what we're going to do next is we're going to head into the overview of the NDIHX upgrade. Then we'll do the giveaway. And then uh, we'll do a Q&A because I'm sure there's a lot of um, long-awaited <laughs> questions for you, Matt. <laughs> I have no doubts. And we're going to have Paul join you as well over there. And I'm going to be hanging out in the chat and I'm making sure that everything goes smooth over here. Yay. High five. Yay. Oh, that was a good one. Unlike the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and I have high five problems, okay? <laughs> if you've been around here for high a while, you know that. We just don't <laughs> click in that way, okay? <laughs> Kyle says, I am Sufan. Kyle Gunderman. <laughs> yeah, he always he guys go, goes in and Sufan. Yeah. Okay, Kyle. I should have known. Congratulations, Kyle. Congrats. Should we send him a book? We're gonna send you a book, Kyle. We'll send you a book, Kyle. <laughs> Bud, sorry you're here just a little late. You did miss trivia, but don't worry. I think this is something that we're gonna keep up with, uh, and see how that goes. Now over to the gents. Hey everybody, welcome to the second portion of Back to Basics where Matt is going to talk a little bit about the NDI upgrade process. 
Um, really quickly, I wanted to mention that we're going to be doing a little bit more trivia on the show, but I forgot to enable the low latency feature on YouTube. <laughs> so there was about 20 seconds of latency. My fault. I will make sure that that is working next time. There's no fun to have latency on a live trip. No. So no. I apologize, guys. It steals all the fun you. away. Thank you for working through that. Um, we're going to do that a better job of that um, next, next presentation. So here's our presentation. So me and Matt are going to walk you through upgrading the firmware of an SDI camera model. And then once we're through with that, we're going to answer questions, and we are going to give away an NDI upgraded 20X Z Cam for l one lucky winner. You do have to be live watching this broadcast in order to win. So if that person's not here, stick around. You guys might be the winner as well. So Matt, congratulations. Great Thank job you. on all the work um, that went into making these cameras uh, NDI compatible. Uh, where do you want to start? Um, I, anywhere. I mean... I've been living in the world for a little while now. Uh, it's hard for me to know what people are interested in, really. It's anymore. almost like boring for you because you've been doing it so much longer. Everyone out there in, let's call it the real world, uh, not that it's not the real world, but <laughs> these guys just got their hands on Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Just recently. Um, yeah, and I've, you know, admittedly been playing with it for a little over a year now. Um, I'm just so happy to see it actually get out into the wild. We're having a few hiccups like any brand new launch, but that being said, uh, I think very soon you're going to see all the dust settle and you're going to love this experience. Um, NDI has just been incredible to work with. Yep, and we're here to answer all your questions. Tess is monitoring the chat. Whenever there's a question that Tess deems relevant enough, we're, she's going to show it and read it to us and display it on the screen and we're going to answer it for you guys. I am so the ruler of all the chats. Throw the chat questions to us. Um, Matt, you're, here's your Telestrator. I'll let oh. you... Your, this is another nice. NDI device. Nice. Um, and Michael, I think we can go ahead to the first slide. So here's the prerequisite. So <laughs> this document, how do people get this document? Um, so you can get this document by going to a brand new tool that we have on our website, the ptzoptics.com website, uh, and it's called the Firmware Finder. Uh, we will be continually working on this in the future. This is a new tool for you to be able to go in, plug in your serial number, and it automatically is going to tell you what the right firmware is for your camera model. Um, it doesn't, you no longer need to know if you have the PoE model or you don't. You just plug in your serial and we take care of the rest in the back end. Um, so as long as you go on there, you're going to be greeted with a firmware file, this document, um, and an upgrade tool. So what we're looking at is the document within, um, and it looks like we're starting to do this. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize I was going to make that loud noise. <laughs> so one of the things we ask, please read this entire document before starting. Read it front to back so that you know what you're getting into. And if you've got any questions, you can reach out to support before you've got a problem. We want to make sure you have a good experience here. Um, so just, you know, please read the document. Um, things in red are put in red for a reason. We're not doing this for fun. Um, we reiterate things in there multiple times, yet again, not for fun, but because we want you to have a good experience. So there's two versions of the firmware. One is for anyone who got a beta copy, essentially. Well, um, so that's a little, so what's really going on there? Um, we have two versions. We have one, and I'm going to call it 25M and 24M. 25M is if your camera has never seen NDI firmware before. So the first batch of cameras that will be coming out of our own facility haven't even shipped out yet that have this new firmware on there. Mm -hmm. So every camera currently that you're buying needs oh. the 25M firmware put on it. Um, and the reason for the difference there, if your camera's never had it, it doesn't know where to store the information for NDI. So the 25M actually allows us to make very deep level changes to your camera and make it work with NDI. Um, 24M is, hey, you made a problem with the settings. You don't know what to do. You've already done the upgrade. You've already licensed your camera. Use the 24M firmware. It will not wipe out a license. It won't change anything on your camera. Um, that's what the 24M, it's kind of going forward. That's what you're going to want. Gotcha. Okay. Does that, that make relate sense? to this question really quick? By Big John. question. Why the MAC address change with the firmware? So if your MAC address changed with the firmware upgrade, you did not do the firmware upgrade properly. Oh, um, sure. When you back up 
when you restore to the camera, it actually puts the original MAC address back on the camera. If you're getting a new MAC address, it means that the restore never committed to your camera. And we're going to go over that right now, so I know it might be a little confusing when that happens, not supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, let's go to the next slide, and there will actually, you'll see there'll be a portion of this um, that we're going to cover. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so I'll do the annotation part. So um, if we look here, we're asking you to launch the brand new PTZ Optics upgrade tool. It's called 2.6C for your, anybody out there who'd be downloading this. Um, allowed to discover the PTZ Optics cameras on your network by clicking the search button. So let's take a look at what we've got written in red. Mm -hmm. Please take note of the IP information currently assigned to the camera. You'll be upgrade, you will be upgrading as you'll need it later in the upgrade process. This is IP address, network mask, gateway, and first DNS. Um, this is just the easy way. There's a couple ways to do the same thing, but if you follow these instructions, yet again, we're trying to make it easy and reliable. Okay. Yes. That's the backup button, right? Yep. So after we've discovered the camera we want to upgrade, right click on the discovered camera you want to upgrade and select backup. Note this backup file should only be restored to the same camera you backed it up from. Just because you have four 12x SDIs does not mean that you can use the same backup file on each of those SDI units. All right, so we click the backup button. We wait for the camera to notify of, of success. Uh, it takes a few minutes for this to complete normally. Um, yet again, you see the same message, backup and restore to the same unit. When the upgrade tool notifies you of success, click the OK button. And now we're going to navigate back to the search tab to find the camera we've just backed up. So now we're going to go to that same camera, right click, and select the upgrade option. As if there weren't enough like, <laughs> circles and arrows <laughs> to this anyway. <laughs> yeah, the circles were a very nice suggestion from our in-house programming team. Um, yay, circles. Um, so from the upgrade tab, click on the drop down for type shown in the top left. Yes. Oh. Don't worry about that. We're good. Sorry. All right, select the type of MTD out of the drop-down menu options. Click the Query button to ensure you're properly communicating with this camera at this point. The response details from the camera will be displayed in the lower window as you're seeing in this slide. Click the Open button and navigate to the firmware for the specific camera and click the open button. You can always verify the proper firmware for your camera by checking the following site and that link is for the PTZ Optics Firmware Finder. Use of the proper firmware for your specific model is very important and can res if you don't follow this and you try and put the wrong one on the wrong camera you can brick your unit. Um, so please please make sure to plug your information in and make sure you're using the right firmware for the right model. All right, click the Upgrade button to begin the firmware upgrade process. A new message, status connected, waiting for upgrade to start, will display under the progress bar. Note that if you receive the warning, upgrade file type does not match, please click OK to continue with the upgrade procedure. The upgrade tool will quickly progress to about 85%. And then you're going to have to play the waiting game. Um, I would highly recommend maybe going and getting a cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> just be patient. Do not interrupt this process. Um, as you can see, we've got a link at the bottom there. So if you think it's taking too long, click on that. You can see how long in real time it took me to do the update. Um, I mean, it's a good five minutes, mm -hmm. I would say, at least. Um, it even reboots twice? Yes. So yeah, the camera will do an initial reboot. It checks to make sure the firmware on there is proper, and then it does a final initialization with another reboot. All right, so the upgrade tool will eventually reach 98%. The camera will reboot twice, and then, then it will be done. Yay, Yay, upgrade success. So now we'll click the OK button. 
Once we're done with that part, we'll go back to the search tab. Note your camera has been reset to factory default settings at this point. So if you have a PTZ model, that would mean your IP address is now 192.168.100.88. If you have a Zcam, that's 192.168.100.99. So on the search tab, click search and locate the camera that's just been upgraded and now has a default address. Right click the camera and go to config. Now, I do have to make one comment here, um, and this was based on some, some feedback we received. You might need to put your PC on that network. Give it a static address of 192.168.100 dot something other than 88 um, to actually locate that camera. This depends on your network setup. Uh, everybody's different, but I just wanted to mention it as it has come up with some regularity. Okay, so using the IP information collected at the beginning of this process, set your camera back to the original network settings. Once you, these are what we collected in the very beginning, your IP address, network mask, all that fun stuff. Once you've properly populated each field, click set and the camera will reboot. We can now navigate back to the search tab and there we should see our camera under its original IP address again. Yay! So now we're going to go to the backup. <laughs> and from the backup uh, tab, we're going to click Restore. And a message of connected will be displayed. Backup, yet again, from and to the exact same camera. Do not share backup files between cameras. This step is very important if the restore does not restore properly. The potential for it not to be able to be licensed properly, to lose licensing, to lose focus capabilities and more is definitely there. Um, so if you reach this stage, shoot support an email. You can definitely leave it in that stage. It's not, even closing the app is not going to delete that backup file. It's going to exist until you go and make another backup file. So don't feel like you're rushed, you're going to ruin something. It's all okay. You contact support and we'll be there to help if you got any problems. Okay, as the restoration process proceeds, you'll see the status change to backup restoring. Yet again, please let this thing complete. Once completed, you'll be greeted by backup success. The camera reboots, click the OK button, and let's go back to the search tab. Yay, all right. So, as some of you might have seen in our, uh, in our tool, there's a new option there for preview. So this is where you could go ahead and click the preview option on that camera that we've just finished upgrading and restoring. And you can actually get a live preview out of the camera. Um, this is actually from right before we launched and the newer tool actually has PTZ control from in there as well. Booyah. Yay, Woo. congrats, you've reached the end. Okay, so we got that far, but I also wanna let everyone know that we just recently uh, released a troubleshooting guide. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things that could happen along the way, and I don't really actually understand how you get into these issues, but there were three or four troubleshooting errors yeah. that could come um, up. So some of, some of the biggest ones that pop up, um, you could have a black screen that shows up after you've licensed your camera, or are you talking about updating in general? Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a few. I don't know, actually know them all. Um, but there were a few troubleshooting errors, and I want to let people know I posted it in the user group. Okay. And I also put it in the download section. Is that what you got today? Okay, yeah. so yeah, that, that troubleshooting guide is going to be once you get your camera licensed with NDI, um, if you're getting a black image, if you're getting mixed camera images, things like that, that guide is going to help you walk through the fun of multicast um, mm -hmm. and using multicast with NDI and our cameras. Um, it's also going to help you possibly identify if your network is set up for multicast. <laughs> so, yeah, and so this document, you know, sometimes I think a lot of people think, okay, I followed all the steps, I should be done. Yeah. But actually, you may, st if you have multiple cameras, basically your camera, when you upgrade the NDI firmware, will get a multicast, a default multicast license. But if you've upgraded two, three, four, ten of these cameras, they've all got the same multicast address. So we're now uh, releasing a document for troubleshooting that will help you uh, identify. Basically, you know, it used to be every camera needs a static IP. Now every camera needs a static IP and a multicast address that are unique. 
um, in order to... Now, of course, you can have the cameras on DHCP and have unique multicast addresses. They are different. Yeah. But if you've got multiple cameras, that will mess with um, you know, the operation of those cameras on a multicast network if they don't have unique multicast addresses. So, yeah, I mean, I can briefly run down if you guys want me to. Some of the troubleshooting. Yeah. Um, so on that note, if you're seeing... Um, say you've set up two or three cameras. They're all licensed. Um, you've got them turned on. And when you go and connect via NDI, all of a sudden, maybe you're seeing two different camera images alternating or you're seeing um, the same feed no matter what camera you're connected to. In all likelihood, you've got the same multicast address uh, in the camera. So if you go into the um, network settings for the camera, you can add a different multicast address per camera. We do, on this guide that we're talking about, we do have recommended uh, multicast ranges to use based on all sorts of fun IEEE information. Um, but uh, let's see, what else do we have? If you get a black feed, this can mean sometimes that you don't have a multicast enabled network and multicast is turned on. Um, one of the ways that you can actually verify this um, so even though you're doing NDI, our RTSP streams still work without a problem. Um, you can go ahead and try and pull the RTSP stream off the camera. If you're getting a, you know, a feed, that usually means that you're being blocked by multicast at that point. Um, and you need to talk to the network engineer or investigate your network to figure out what it's going to take. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, I just was thinking about this for a second here, and I just want to let everyone know we have our live YouTube subscriber count. I know there's a few of you who haven't subscribed yet. You got a lot of great information we're working on with Matt and the team. So here uh, we're at. So oh, there we go. Do do do. Oh, we got another one. Someone sent us a little NDI message. Uh, you can send super chat messages here, but of course you can just subscribe. We're at 7:47. I want to see you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and this is our live counter here. But anywho. Also, the Facebook user group, obviously, is a great place to get the latest information. That's available at facebook.com slash group slash PTZ Optics Pals. You can uh, chat with me and Tess. I think you're in there, too, maybe. Yep. Jonathan, a lot of our support guys are in there. Uh, and you can, oh, <laughs> we're just getting uh, all kinds of uh, notifications from you guys. Thank you. Um, so that leads us to our giveaway. Um, we have, we decided to just pre-install uh, NDI on this model um, instead of doing it live because of that process that it takes a while. It yeah. might, might have taken a little longer. So someone's going to win this. This is a PoE 1080p 30 frame per second Z cam. It has Ethernet. It has SDI. It has uh, power ca cable in case you don't have uh, PoE. We've yep. got line in. Yep. Uh, to embed into the NDI stream. This outputs direct NDI. And Matt, can we talk a little bit about the Z cams and NDI? Yeah. Because I think that's something new. Let me grab um, this model as well. So these are the two Z cam models that we have, yes. right? Yep. And these are now going to have their own SKUs for NDI? Yes. So you will be seeing, I'm not going to uh, steal the thunder away from our partner side of the business. Um, I'm going to let them make the announcements there mm -hmm. uh, about what the part numbers are going to be. And I will say that there's some very exciting things coming with the pricing for it for you guys. Um, so, you know, I, I would keep my ears open. Um, but yes, we are going to be enabling uh, NDI pre-enabled models. You can upgrade these units just like the others. Um, but we've heard what you were asking for and you really, really, really wanted pre-enabled units. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do it. Um, it's not too difficult for us at this point. We, we, we think we've got it down. <laughs> um, that being said, um, as you all are hopefully aware, the VL model, just to get expectations in line, you can change the lens. You have an auto iris. Other than that, it is a manual focus and a manual zoom. So really, when you get this camera in NDI, it, there's not much control that you get over it. You're getting an NDI feed out of this. On the other hand, this camera, you do have NDI control. Obviously, you can't pan or tilt, but you can definitely zoom and do all those other fun things on this camera using NDI. Um, it's already operational. You guys should have a great experience with it. Uh, I've been chatting with quite a few people that have a nice mix that they've done on the upgrades mm -hmm. from you know, one PTZ and then two 20XZ cams, um, and they're just loving it. 
Yeah, I love the, the ability to have, I mean, just, I don't think I'm spilling any beans to let people know that we're basically going to be kind of keeping the pricing very uh, standard so that we want you to get the right camera for the application. Yeah. You'll notice that the NDI pricing for the PTZ cameras has already been released. Whether it's a 12 or a 20, it's the same price because we want you to make the right decision. Do you need that wider angle zoom? Do you want that little bit uh, wider uh, field of view? Um, and then with the 20X Z cam, and the variable lens cam, which has a, comes with a 120 degree field of view, wide angle, variable lens, plus you can put whatever you want. These will be the same price. Yeah. Uh, because we want you to make the right decision. We don't want price to get in the way. NDI is just going to make your life simpler for, for deploying these products. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't want any hang ups or um, we didn't want you having to sit there and try and shoehorn the wrong solution in. So when we were looking at how to deploy this. Uh, we felt very strongly with the model we started with the PTZs and that it should be one price no matter which one you select. Um, it's one of those things we're going to work very hard to try and continue that exact same model for, for you guys because, you know, the beauty here is we want you to do stellar things with our cameras um, and we don't want you being limited by having to choose the wrong camera because of its price point. Um. A little bit of a good news here on the Zcam as well for 20X. A lot of vMix users were waiting for uh, PTZ control of this. Of course, it would just be zoom control. Um, the, the new vMix has done it. There, yes. It's done. It hasn't been rolled out yet. But in the NAB release, which is kind of there, they usually do two releases a year, one at NAB and one at the other side of the year. Uh, it will be supported in the um, vMix release coming out very soon. So on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw myself under the bus a little bit there and give vMix some credit. Um, vMix has implemented focus control as well. Oh, wow. um, but that being said, um, at the moment it doesn't work with our cameras. We are working on a firmware fix okay. for that, but it is by no means vMix fault. We're working on solving the problem. Um, so no need to reach out to their support. We're aware of the issue. We're resolving the issue. They've got everything handled on their side. Thank you for our latest two subscribers. Um, we got two more here, I can see. Um, thank you so much. And let's go over to Tess, if that's all right, to do the giveaway. I think Tess has a little giveaway. Are, are you prepared for that, or should I pull it up? Mm -hmm. Tess is prepared to announce the giveaway winner. Someone is going to win this NDI upgraded 20XZ cam. We're going to keep pulling winners until the show is done. Matt, why don't you go ahead and take a seat? Yeah. And we'll let you and Tess kind of answer questions, and me and Michael will hang out. Yeah. Good, because there's a lot of them for you. <laughs> but Yay. luckily, Sean's in the chat and, <laughs> and stuff, so... In fact, why don't I grab this little teaser for people? That is a very exciting teaser. What's that, Matt? Um, this might be the NDI HX pre-enabled model. <laughs> but that's all we're going to show for now. All Keep right. the logo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We ready to announce the giveaway winner? Today's winner is Clifton Kern. Clifton, Ooh. congratulations. Are you in the chat? Make sure uh, you give us a heads up that you're in the chat because we have to know that you're here in order to get you this camera. Clifton is a regular of ours, so that's very exciting. And I'm just hoping he's here. Everybody announce yourselves in the chat. Yes, everybody make sure you're announcing yourselves because we do move on to another winner uh, if the winner doesn't claim their prize in the chat. Chad, oh. Mike Chase has a good question. I don't know if Matt wants to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know, Mike? <laughs> Who do you work for? Um, so, Mike, um, keep your ears peeled. I, I am not going to say any more, which should be almost enough of a giveaway there. Um, but, yeah, yeah, keep your ears peeled. Very, people are very excited about hearing the news of Focus Control and vMix. Yeah, we had some guy reach out to support, which is how I originally found out um, that was happening. <laughs> I'll read out the questions for you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Sorry. So, yeah, that, so will NDI support wireless streaming or casting? <gasps> Clifton's here. Um, Sorry. Yeah. I, was Clifton the one who won? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So that congratulations. That's a somewhat loaded question, unfortunately. Um, will it ever be built into our models? Possibly. It's certainly something we're exploring. I love wireless. It's been a passion of mine for a long time. The more wireless you can implement properly, um, you know, we'll definitely do it. But until we can get a quality setup, um, you won't see it in our lineup. Oliver says Mimo Live will also support NDI PTZ soon. Something I haven't heard. Yes, we'll right. have Mimo Live. I'm going through the pages on vMix Social, which is why it's taking me a little bit to queue up some of these questions. Oh, so mm -hmm. Here's one from Richard. If I view a camera in New Tech Studio app at the same time as vMix, do I have to multicast setting? Do I have the multicast settings properly set up? Is this why vMix doesn't always see the camera? So, yeah, I, I, that's almost a two part answer for you. Um, so if you had multicast set up, it would be no problem to bring it into the new tech studio app, vMix, a TriCaster, another vMix setup. Um, you could keep pulling it into things without a problem. Um, that being said, our cameras typically um, can handle up to two users pulling a stream. However, when you do NDI, um, you're already occupying both streams with a high def and low def feed. So really, um, I wouldn't recommend pulling an NDI feed into more than one spot unless you've got multicast running. You might luck out and it works, but I, I wouldn't rely on it. Alrighty. Okay, here's this one from John. Have upgraded two cameras, but I didn't restore the first one before moving on to second camera. What should I do with that first camera? Will support have a copy of the config file? Yes. Um, so on that note, we I've worked hard with the support team since the pre-launch, um, and we've really been working out ways to solve some of these these errors that pop up. Um, you know, I we have the same problems happen ourselves where we accidentally restore to a different camera. You know, you just get too much going on. Um, but that being said, just share with support your serial number, what your camera model is, um, and they can help you create a new config file so that you can get that camera fully restored to its proper non-production state. More questions about the MAC address. I did three upgrades, and one of them gave me a new MAC address that you should look back. It's something you've done in the upgrade. Yeah, process. yeah, and you know we have had a few. Actually, I can say two people um, where for some reason it you know I've walked through it with them. I've seen the process go, and on their network something is just acting funny. Um, we've been able to bring the cameras back. Typically, have no problem getting them upgraded and sending them back off to the client. Um, but yeah, it, you know, you could have some issue. We're definitely delving deeper into the world of networking with this. Um, and as a result, there's more of a learning curve than, than the old production style. All right. Chad says, is it possible that a future model will be able to update the firmware without a laptop, laptop and desktop as intermediary? Uh, at the moment, no, we, d we don't have any designs in place. Um, that being said, it is something that I've started playing with in code, but um, no, we don't have any immediate plans to move forward with something like that. I'm guessing I could just go on for hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, these are great questions. <laughs> okay, Akeem says, do I need to turn NDI on in the camera settings? My camera's setting are off and I am able to put them in as an NDI source. Yeah, so the NDI modes, um, you know, that's another thing that you'll notice now when you go to the video settings, there's an NDI mode dropdown. Um, in that dropdown, you've got a high, medium, and low. Uh, we will be releasing some update firmware for anybody yet again. So we're going to have some new firmware coming and I'm going to talk about these changes here because it's perfect timing. Um, but anybody who's already licensed your camera, Use the 24M firmware going forward. Um, just going to put that out there as a nice little reminder. So in the settings, um, basically you don't need them enabled for NDI to work properly. These are just recommended settings. Uh, so we're trying to make it easy on you. 
That being said, some of the settings in there, things have changed since we first dive, started diving into uh, NDI over a year ago. Um, so when you go and turn that on, one of the things to be aware of, all the NDI modes automatically turn on multicast. The updated firmware is going to remove this feature um, because we want you to decide when to turn on multicast and not forcing it on you. Um, so just be aware as you change those modes that you always, after clicking apply, need to go to the network page and turn off multicast if you do not have a multicast uh, network. Um, let's see, what else was in there? Oops, sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Uh, is there a way to enter the license on a Mac? Um, the last time I tested the Studio Monitor tools for the Mac, I did not see a way to do that, um, but I have not tested the newest release from NewTek, um, so it'd be worth checking uh, if it was in there. Yes, okay, so remember, people are asking about the price of the upgrade for now. It is half off of 600, so it's 300 right now, but only until Friday when the yeah. uh, pre-upgraded cameras begin shipping. So this Friday is your last chance. Does that mean, you know, Friday morning, it's no, it's, it's, it's Yeah, closed. so as of 8 a.m. on, 8 a.m. Eastern time on Friday, we will no longer be accepting any more pre-orders. Okay. All righty. And, okay, Meek is asking questions about wireless uh, technology and Lightbridge, which I've never heard of. Yeah, so we've done a lot of testing with a variety of different technologies. Um a bunch of different um, wireless manufacturers ranging from 2.4, 5 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz technologies. Um, they all have their pluses, they all have their minuses. Um, what I think is really exciting here is with NDI, it's the first time I've really been able to set up wireless bridges um, and things like that that will allow you to use the camera with NDI uh, wirelessly. And I've been very impressed by the quality. Um, and that's where I said, you know, it is something we're exploring, the idea of a wireless camera. Um, but at the moment, we're, we're not quite there and ready to release it yet. Getting some love from Mr. Sinclair. Jim is asking again about um, upgrade possibilities for Mac and OS. IOS. Um, at the moment, we do not have any plans to make Mac OS software. Um, part of the reason being it accounts for a very small percentage of our user base um, that have only Macs in their setup. Um, and then the other problem is the Mac operating system and how quickly it changes. Um, keeping up with that program would be a lot of work, unfortunately. So at the moment, we don't have plans. Um, it is something that we do continually research and see if we can find a developer that would be willing to work with us at an affordable rate. Um, but yeah, at the moment, we, we just don't have a way to make that happen. Already, already trying to spin too many plates at one time, unfortunately. Right, but we do have a lot of good stuff coming for you guys that I don't think will disappoint. Um, let's see what else we have here. Some just some good discussion going on. Need me? I think that covers us for the majority of the questions that I'm oh, seeing wow. that haven't been lost. I'm, I apologize <laughs> uh, in the pages of comments <laughs> that we have on VMIX Social right now, which is good. We love the feedback and the interaction from so you guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for there watching today. This has been a really fun broadcast. Just stole the show from Tess a little bit there. Um, if only I had something to throw at you. Thank you, all of you guys who subscribed. We're at 7,050 now, <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Great thank to you, see Matt. you there. And then, of course... Don't forget to be one of those people who like our Facebook page because uh, the Facebook user group Tess spends a lot of time. That's literally what she does. So don't forget to like and subscribe so we can keep you guys updated. Uh, it's been a really fun chat. We're going to hopefully drag Matt onto the show more often. I think that would be uh, good for everybody. And um, that's our show, folks. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It's been a blast. Uh, one of the things I'll say, I saw you giving me the funny ears <laughs> on the replay here. Um, the last thing I'll say is that, you know, it, it, it take a lot of you guys out there are 
broadcast engineers, you know, you have a really <laughs> long history. You know more about broadcasting yeah, and streaming than we do. So we love it when you come to our show, correct us when we're wrong, give us advice. This whole studio is from broadcasters who have 30 years of experience who've been giving us tips and tricks along the way. So we love it when you guys are experienced, <laughs> but if you're not as experienced and you want to learn more, uh, even if you are experienced, subscribe to the channel, check out what we're doing, either bust our balls for doing something wrong <laughs> or actually help us out and you know learn something along the way. So we'd love to have you in our community, uh, whether it's on our Facebook group or just in the, the, the YouTube social um, world that we live in. So thanks so much, everybody. That's our show. And we'll see you on Friday. We might take a break uh, this week. NAB is coming up. Don't forget to check us out in Las Vegas. Uh, NAB is the second week in April. We'll be there in the Central Hall. More information about that is obviously coming out soon. But um, we will see you next Wednesday. We're going to bring New Tech on the show. And New Tech is going to give us a look at the NDI resources from the New Tech website. You know, you, you can now, if you have an NDI license for your PTZ Optics camera, you can actually reach out to New Tech support. Um, they'll, this whole NDI workflow and this whole NDI world that we live in now allows for a lot of great stuff, like an NDI Telestrator. You know, I can give myself bunny ears if I want to. Lots of funny <laughs> little things that are coming out into the world today. Um, we want to dig into this whole world. Now that PTZ Optics is fully NDI supported, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff. Um, the new tool that I mentioned is the NDI Telestrator, and uh, that's available on Windows. We're using a tablet. All kinds of fun stuff we're going to be dig digging into, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next show. Uh, there's no pre-show anymore. I don't know if you guys noticed that. We're doing a 10-second countdown, and we're starting exactly at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 11 a.m. Pacific, Wednesdays and Fridays. We'll see you guys in our next show. Take care, everybody. <laughs>